Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to show you a kind of basic tutorial of how to edit your 360 videos, how to work with the programs and how to basically go from shooting with the camera to having a decent video ready to upload. Now this is going to be, like I say, a kind of basic tutorial because I get a lot of questions that are kind of basic from people who just started using 360 cameras. This is kind of who this is aimed at. So today we're going to be using footage shot with the Insta360 One X which is is a kind of quite popular 360 camera so that's why I'm using this as an example but most of what I'm saying will apply to basically any of the consumer cameras I mean they all work in roughly the same way and especially when it comes to editing the programs I'm going to use is the insta360 studio which is just for this camera your own camera will have come with its own software um, and this is I'm going to use this for stitching which I'll talk about in a minute and I'm also using Premiere Pro which is I know is quite an advanced program and not everyone will have it but it is by far the best program to edit 360 video with so I mean if you don't have it you can download free trial and use it just once on a one-off basis so let's get started and I'm going to uh, show you what I do to edit my 360 video so pretend you've just shot your video and you have plugged in your camera to your laptop or your computer this is what you will see these kind of weird files dot insv which is the files the raw files from the insta 361 x these are non-stitched so you can't play them they won't be in 360 you need to um use the insta 360 studio which is here to stitch them together so let's do that i'm going to drag one video in and i'm not even sure what this is there we go it's just me walking around in a park and you can see it now in a kind of flat format it's not even in 360 yet well basically all you need to do now is use this program to export your footage and stitch it together so that it looks like a proper 360 video and it's um, you're able to edit it as such now like I say this program is only for the insta 361 X camera your camera will have its own desktop software which allows you to stitch your raw 360 footage together into a 360 file however it may also be the case that your camera automatically makes 360 images straight away you don't need to stitch it it just does it inside the camera it will depend what camera you have so you may be able to just skip this step but it will depend on the camera you have for example if you have a camera you plug it in and you see this kind of image like these two circular fish eyes this means your camera does not stitch it together it, you need to use a desktop software to stitch your 360 image it just basically puts these two round images into a 360 format so in this case i am just going to click here to export the footage and you can select the resolution I mean, this can go higher, this can go up to a 5K, so, I mean, you could choose that, or and you can choose the how much bitrate, so you'd want probably the highest, and, um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to do it now, because I already have the footage ready to go, so I'm just going to press cancel, but you would press OK, and it would take, I don't know, depends on your laptop and your desktop, a couple of minutes or up to 10, 15 minutes to stitch it together. So once you have done that and you have exported your raw footage and stitched it together into a 360 file, it should just come out as an MP4. But what we're going to do is drag it into Premiere Pro. So we're going to open Premiere Pro and basically you just need either the 2018 or 2019 version of Premiere Pro to get this to work. So you've stitched your files together, it's in an MP4 format. You just drag it in to Premiere Pro into your footage to drag it into the timeline and there we go so um yeah here it is this is the file that we're playing with this is the video now if you wanted to view it in the 360 format like we just did before you need to go into the little tray here press plus and find this uh this little icon here toggle vr video display and select it and press ok i've already done that because it's here and you can now look around like this. Now, I'm not sure why my version makes it really small. It's really annoying. I don't know why. It doesn't happen with any of my other laptops or computers or any other one that I tried. But, yeah, this should be bigger. But for me, it's not. But, yeah, as you can see, you can kind of look around in the 360 format. Now, what you need to look at first, I would suggest, is color correction. Because almost all your video does kind of need some color correction. And if you have Premiere Pro, it's a powerful program that allows you to change colors and lights and effects so you may as well use it if it's here it's fairly simple to be honest just click on your video go to color the color tab which is up here and yeah play around with this go to basic correction which we are on already um, and just play around you can make a big difference in the quality of your footage so let's just play around look how much bright it's we'll make it a little bit brighter don't need to play around too much contrast make it a bit darker 
dark areas darker the highlights quite a lot so we'll bring down the highlights shadows yeah make it darker I mean as you can see I'm just playing around there is no like right or wrong it will completely depend on where your your footage is if it's outside if it's indoors if it's sunny dark whatever you just need to play around and take a look at what happens you can always go back if you get it wrong so yeah let's up the saturation and there we go and then you can go a bit more creative with colors here in this um creative tab i tend to not do much with this because i'm not an expert at color correction so it's not my gig but you can still play around a little bit more i mean it's already looking i think a lot better and yeah there are some more things you can do but i'm just going to leave it like that we can or let's see the difference between the two if we turn these off see how much better it is already adding a lot more color and a lot more vibrance and making the video look a lot better. I mean, we can even see it here. If we maximize this, it's looking good. We're previewing this at one eighth of the quality. So, you know, it does look a lot better when it's full. Now, if you wanted to add some effects, if you wanted to move the image, if you wanted to add anything to the image, for example, a, a photo on top of it or text on top of it, you need to go to the specialized effects in the effects tab, immersive video. These are the things you need to use with your 360 video. All the other effects, or at least 90% of them, won't work with 360 video just because of the way it's made and it will just, I mean, distort things. It won't work properly. For a start, you can change the starting point, the center point of your video. So for example, if I wanted this area here to be in the center, so whatever's in the center is what the person sees first. In the 360 image, it's what's starting point, the thing that they look at first, and I wanted it to be this organ or whatever it is. I wanted to move that. Um, what you need to do is go to VR Rotate Sphere, drag it across, drop it on top of the video, go down, here it is, Rotate Sphere, and then you pan here, the Y axis, and you just move it along so that it's now in the center. So if I uploaded this 360 video as it is now to Facebook, YouTube, or put it on a VR headset, I would be seeing this area first at the start of the video, so like this. This will be the start, and then I could look around here, look around here. So if I wanted this area to be at the start, then I would have to move it again. We can do that so that now this area is at the front of the image and this is behind. So that's how you move. That's how you do it in a, you can't do it any other way. Don't try and do it with the other moving movements position tabs like this, because look, that's all it does. It doesn't work properly. And yeah, and you can also change things like this. This is more for straightening out. If your video was a bit wonky, uh, you would use the X axis and the Z axis to kind of fix that. But we don't need to do that because it was on a tripod. So it's fairly um, straight as it was. Another thing you can do is if you wanted to add images and text into your 360 video, add, for example, things that you made in Photoshop, other photos that you've taken in a normal non 360 format, you can add these on top of your video. So let's have a look and see how that's done. Okay, so I've dragged this random image that I found on my computer of a man laying in a ball pit. Um, it's just a normal JPEG, it's not in 360, it's just a normal uh, photo taken with a DSLR or a, cam or a phone camera or something. Okay, so there it is. So I've just dragged this random image that I have on top of my 360 video. And you may think that that's all you need to do, but no, because if you go into the VR, format or to toggle the VR video, you can see it's kind of warped, um, it's curved, it doesn't look how it's supposed to, and even if we move this around, it would be even worse. So if we moved it, say, down here a bit, it kind of elongates it, it makes it look weird, basically. That's not how you do it. Um, I mean, so that's so you couldn't really leave it like this, it wouldn't look very professional, it wouldn't look very good in the final image. So what you need to do is, go to VR plane to sphere in this immersive video tab. Drag that on top of the photo that you wanted to put on top and you can see it's changed it. It's basically transformed it so that it works in this 360 format. So now it does look better. If we have a look in the tab here, you can see it's got straight edges. It looks fine, it's not curved it looks how it should look in the um, in the video. So yeah, let's just go out of that. And if you wanted to move this around, you would need to go down to the VR plane to sphere. And if you wanted to make it smaller, you'd need to use this area, this tab, rather than the actual motion tab, use the VR plane to sphere controls. You can rotate it, spin it around, do whatever, and it will still look fine in the video. It will look not warped, it won't look weird, you can move it about. 
So let's see where it is now. There we go. So I've moved it there. So yeah, you can do multiple images. You can even put video in the same way if you wanted to drag just an MP4 you shot with your camera, your uh, DSLR or your phone on top of your 360 video. Then you would do the same thing, just drag VR plane to fit on top of it, move it around using those controls. I think those are kind of the basic things you need to know. The only other thing I'd say you need to worry about is transitions, which I'm going to show you right now. So if you have more than one video and you wanted to combine them together, in the VR, in a VR video, you don't want it to just jump from one thing to the other. It's not really very good. I mean, it just doesn't work that well in 360 video. You want it to be a smooth transition to take a few seconds. And yeah, so that people kind of get used to it, that you don't just jump from one thing to another, especially when viewing on a VR headset. Let's drag another video on top or next to our original one. So this one is filmed in, where was it? Regent Street in London. So we've got these two videos, we put them next to each other, combined together, basically just attached to each other. Now what you wanna do is go to, on the effects tab, video transitions, Go to immersive video again there's an immersive video tab and you just want to choose one of these and drag it in between the two so i personally like vr iris wipe so we go there we drag it in between the two there we go so here's the uh the kind of effect now what i want to do is kind of make this a bit longer because one second maybe two seconds i think and this is what it looks like so you can see the kind of process here. So guys, I guess the last thing I need to teach you or show you is how to render out your final video properly. So what you need to do, well, so say, so you're content with your your uh, color correction, with the images you're using, with the transitions, you've added all of your text on top of your video and other whatever else you wanted to add on top of it. And now you are ready to render your 360 video out. So what you need to do is go to file, export media now it should automatically detect whether it's a vr video so make sure you click this video is vr then for the other settings you can basically leave it the same you can allow it to match the source which is kind of this resolution you can change it to 4k resolution if you want but what you do need to make sure is you choose a high bit rate because the higher the bit rate the better whatever camera whatever bit rate your camera shoots at try and match that so this shoots at around about 100 megabits per second so i always put it around about 90 or something i mean that's not gonna make too much difference but yeah that's it then you're ready to go so that's kind of it guys this is my basic tutorial for just stitching editing and combining 360 video using Premiere Pro and whatever program your camera uses to stitch it together. Now, that is, like I say, very basic. There is so much more we can do uh, with 360 videos. For example, reframing, over capture, which I'll do another another tutorial on if you want me to. Um, and this is uses also Premiere Pro and the GoPro VR reframe plugins. You can create some awesome effects using that. But in, in terms of VR 360 video, I think this is basically all you need to do to create a good story is know how to add more things on top of your 360 video so text images and other normal flat video um, how to color correct so it looks its best and removing highlights and anything that you don't want to be there um, cutting is the same just shortening is the same just dragging it across and the transitions between one frame and another is very important as well so i hope that's been useful i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial if you have any more questions anything that i missed out then please feel free to comment and i will get back to you if i know the answer i will tell you and yeah i'll try and make another one of these videos for over capture because i think that's kind of the coolest thing you can do with a 360 camera and it's a lot more accessible to a lot more people so yeah that will be coming soon hopefully but until then i hope you have enjoyed this yeah and i'll see you next time bye